Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Love, Sex, and Magic with me, your host, Mel Wells. And today's guest is the fabulous intuitive astrologer, Danielle Page. Danielle Page is an international spiritual teacher, soul astrologer, host of Cosmic Body Podcast, and founder of Purposely Divine School for Your Soul and Astrology Mystery School. Danielle has given talks on mysticism and astrology at Scorpios Mykonos, Glossier Headquarters in NYC, Soho House, The Assemblage, The Good Fest, and has traveled to over 32 countries bringing women together whilst leading retreats in Hawaii, Costa Rica, as well as three retreats on the Greek islands of Mykonos and Kithnos. Her work has been featured in Vogue, Goop, London Standard, and more. So in this episode, we talk all about the astrology and energy forecast for 2022. We speak about what was going on in the stars at around the time of when when everything was kicking off with covid we talk about the new wave of spirit babies that are coming through including the spirit baby of my own and we also talked about our venus placements how important our venus placements are in our chart for how we show up in love and relationships so if you love astrology then definitely Enjoy this episode. The beautiful Danielle Page, welcome to Love, Sex, and Magic. Thank you so much for having me. So glad to be here. I'm so happy to have you here. We've been wanting to do this for quite some time, and the stars have aligned. Yes, and now we're neighbors. And now we're neighbors (laughs) for a short period of time. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. (laughs) So I have been engaged with your work for quite some time. But I remember like feeling like we most connected like when all the COVID stuff was like starting to kick off. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> Do you yes, remember yes, like it was yes. the start of the pandemic, it was yes. the start of the lockdowns. And you know, I had so much comfort from coming to your page because I remember feeling intuitively like things were not adding up. Right. And I remember feeling intuitively like this is we're not being told the truth, right? Yeah. And this is this is not just about a pandemic, and this is not just an accident. And mm-hmm. as I, I was like trying to like really trust myself with that, and I was coming to your page, <laughs> and I was and you were like shit all up. of the astrology <laughs> is, and all of the astrology that you were sharing yeah. like confirmed everything that yeah. I was that I was yeah. feeling. And that's really been my relationship with astrology is like, it makes me know that, oh, I'm not going crazy. Yes. Like, oh, this is meant to be happening right now. This is the way that the stars have been aligned. And so maybe we can kind of start there with like, what was going on in the sky with the planets when all of that COVID stuff has has been happening? And I mean, obviously now it's almost like... (laughs) The mainstream media has like dropped COVID completely and it's gone. now COVID it's all what? about Russia. COVID exactly. What? Yeah. COVID what? Um, so like, yeah, what was happening astrologically throughout yeah. the pandemic? So I'll keep this um, easy to understand because I know there's a lot of people that won't understand all the, the technical details. But basically, I remember looking at the astrology in November of 2019. And at that time, I was really focused on more soul astrology. So I wasn't tracking the cycles I wasn't um, looking to see forecasts, but something told me to look. Um, People were talking about, you know, 2020 vision. And I was like, okay, well, what's going to happen in 2020? So I look, and that's when I got my first clue of like, oh, no, there's something big going on. And I saw um, some of the configurations that were happening um, during 9-11. So that was my first kickoff. So then I started doing some research. And started going back. And there are some amazing astrologers who really track the cycles with history. And like this called mundane astrology. And um, it's an amazing, amazing craft. So I started doing some research. And it turns out that we were um, going to be under the, some of the same energy of World War One, World War II, wow. um, 9-11, and the HIV AIDS pandemic. Mm. Um, so that was really interesting. And then when I saw, um, you know, some of the planets... Doing this, this is when I started um, kind of mentioning it to my audience and being like, hey guys, so I know everyone's really excited for 2020 vision and like you think it's just going to be the best year yet. And I didn't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I also (laughs) realistically, I'm like, and I have a video still, it was November 2019, I said, so 
I don't know how to say this because I don't want to scare them and tell them about all those things. But I said, you know, the universe is going to get our attention and it's going to be loud and it's going to be shocking and um, it's not going to be what we expect. Now, I didn't actually know it was going to be a pandemic. I think maybe if I was um, now, I probably would be able to fit, like put a little bit more together. But like I, my astrology, like skills just like skyrocketed after this because I had to like really figure stuff out. Mm. So I didn't know it was going to be a pandemic, but I knew that it was not going to be good. It was going to be bad and it was going to be shocking. So um, that's kind of what started everything. And um, and here we are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> so... Right. And like, what would you say the themes of this year are, 2022? How have we moved on from that? Have like certain planets moved? So now we're in a different, different kind of place with this year. Like what's the, what are the new changes? Yeah. So it was interesting when I was looking like 2020, once I really dove in, I was like, okay, it was kind of easy to see what's going on because the planets, and when you look at outer planets and they're, um, they're making impact, it's, it's pretty easy and obvious to tell. So 2020 was, um, clear. 2021, I saw, and I did a, you know, a forecast on that in the beginning of the year, and I got that theme. And then I got to 2022 as I was doing this, and it was a little bit hard for me to figure out. And so I was sitting with this for a while, and then in my sitting with this, I realized, you know, this is actually part of what's going on. And so I was feeling into it because, you know, I use my intuition as well. And I did a whole webinar, I, and the morning that I was going to present the webinar, I get this download that this year is cosmic ayahuasca. So I go back to my PowerPoint, add that in, move everything around. And I was like, that's what it is. So Whoa. when, and you know, they, that's just the word that they, as I look at your ayahuasca painting over there, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. and you know, that was just the word that they gave me because they knew that I would understand what that meant. Okay. Yeah. So what they meant by that is this year, um, there's a lot of Pluto and Scorpio energy <gasps> and that's, I have Pluto and Scorpio. Um, well, everyone, everyone around age. Yeah. Okay. Everyone around age does. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God, what a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 everyone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Good to know. Um, but the kind of the archetype is um, we have the south node in Scorpio. Okay. So that's ruled by Pluto or Mars, depending on what astrology you use. And that has a pulse, right? And then we have the um, Pluto return to the United States, which we could talk about in a moment. So there are there are a lot of themes about Scorpio and Pluto. And what Scorpio does is Scorpio dives deep into the abyss and it goes straight to the heart of everything. So straight into the dark, the, the scary, the, um, you know, anything that it wants to transform and it pulls it out, you know, so Pluto is really like the caterpillar turning into um, a butterfly and it's that a metamorphosis, right? It's that that crystal, chrysalis process that was called, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's that process because it's, it's the death in the meantime and then this coming out on the other end. But 2022, what they were showing me is it's a lot of going deep into the crevices that we haven't been. Now, this doesn't mean bad. It just means that this is the theme and the pulse. So we're going to see a lot of things coming up and we're already seeing that in the media about like, um, I mean, a lot of the narratives are just not holding up anymore. I mean, they're just yeah. trying. I mean, it's like building a skyscraper on like toothpicks, right? Like the thing is going to fall. So we're starting to see things like they're doing their hardest to cover it up, right? Well, I but, feel like since the pandemic, people have lost so much trust in watching the news. Some people. Media. And then you have tons of people. <laughs> so I like to keep my feelers out to be like, who are the people that think totally different than me? Because I like yeah, to get into their totally, mind. Totally. And I'm just intrigued by it. I'm like, this is like another planet. Like, what is going on? It's another dimension. But then there's so many people that still just, we saw it. They follow along. So yes, I agree with you mm. that so many people don't believe in it. Uh, don't believe in the media. And then... But half the world still just is doing Eating exactly what they're told, yeah. right? So, you know, I think sometimes we get in our bubbles and like obviously our bubble is people that see through this. But then when you go outside and you're like, oh no, the rest of the world is just like just doing whatever they're told still. Okay. It's so frightening. Pluto in Scorpio yes. is happening right now. So um, we have a south node. So I'll talk about this. Um the collective nodes shift signs about every two and a half years. Okay. And so in, in January, they moved into Taurus and Scorpio. Okay? Scorpio being the south, south node, what Taurus we're kind of moving away north. from, and, and Taurus north node, what we're moving towards. So Taurus north node is a lot to do with money, 
finances, right? We knew this is um, all finance stuff is going to come up. I mean, look at our, all the prices and people are freaking out about money. Well, it's mm, if you watch my webinar, I warned everyone. Yes. Yeah, I warned everyone. I mean, you have a northern and Taurus. Taurus rules the banking sy system, agriculture, money. So we just have to ride the waves, right? It's going to happen. Mm. The themes are there. Um, and then the south node in Pluto, excuse me, south node in Scorpio is a lot about what we're letting go of and releasing. And um, it's a lot of um, old vibration. It's a lot of old energy. It's a lot of old sexual energy, too, that doesn't... I think there's going to be some sexual stuff coming up on the news that we see that's being reported. Mm -hmm. That'll be interesting to witness. Um, but it's... The South Node in Scorpio just asked you, let go of what is no longer serving you. And so that is a huge collective theme. And that's why, you know, even more people are moving, even more people getting divorced, even more people are, you know, now with people that they want to be with. Um, you know, people are, I believe, becoming more aligned with their true soul essence. And that's because Pluto does that for you. Pluto is connected to the soul. And so the soul has a higher plan, right? Obviously, we know that it's not what... Mel or Danielle wants, what does our soul want, right? Yeah. And so the cosmic ayahuasca, going back to that, is can we listen to the rhythm? Can we listen to the pulse of our soul, not the egoic, um, you know, Danielle that's running the show? Like, use mm -hmm. the personality of yourself. Use my personality because that's special to me, that's special to you. Um, and we chose this for a reason, but what does the soul want? What, what, mm. How can the soul come through with this magic? And that's really a big theme for this year. It's beautiful. I love that. Cosmic yeah. ayahuasca. Yeah. They literally... Sign right, me up. <laughs> they, I know. They literally, right before I was about to do it, I got the download and I had to go back and add slides. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the cosmic ayahuasca theme has been going on for some time already, right? Or oh, it, it definitely has. Recent? But this is even more with the south node in Scorpio. Okay. So it's like... And, you know, the, the nodal axis, just to give people um, an understanding, it was in um, Sagittarius and Gemini. And Gemini is all about the media and Sagittarius is about truth. And so what were they doing? Mm. Censoring truth, blocking. I mean, I told people it's going to get really bad until the end of 2021 and then it's going to die off a little bit. And now we're seeing it. It's dying off a little bit. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. I told my Telegram audience, I said, watch to the end of the year. They're going to go hard on censorship. And they did. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm not allowed to say anything. You know, I can't say it. That's why you've re you were messaging me stuff. I'm like, I can't talk about it here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I can't it. talk about it here. Yeah. Yeah. My account was in such jeopardy so many times. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And what else do you see like around the corner for us? If we've got this cosmic ayahuasca stuff going on where we're like purging and everything is like death and rebirth and everything yeah. is shifting. We've got the no collective North Node Taurus. It's like a lot happening with the money system. Money and also coming, Taurus is all about our value system. So mm. what do we, what do we value? Who are we? Um, what do we desire? And you know, it's honestly with Taurus, it's the simple pleasures in life. You know, um, farming, growing your own food, going back to community. Um, Taurus sustains itself through nature because it is the earth. So there's a lot of that as well. Um, even more. And I know we saw that in 2021 and like everyone left the cities, you know, 2020, 2021, they left the cities to go into, um, you know, the country and to move out. But now it's like, okay, we did that, but now what can we build here? So when I think of North Node in um, Taurus, and I have chills up my leg right now, it is like truly the new earth. And I say new earth, I mean, that's a catchphrase that we all made up, but we all for the most part, understand it's like building new, getting rid of the programming of the old. And, you know, because the thing is, you're not going to compete. Like, I, I, we're not going to compete with Google. We're not going to compete with, um, you know, Microsoft. You're not going to compete with a Facebook. You know, you, you're not going to beat them. So that's not the point. The point is go this way and create the new. Yeah, because yeah, you're, yeah. yeah, they're not going to stop. So, I mean, yeah. it's going to waste everyone's time, right? So yeah. I really Creating think... the new systems so the old mm -hmm. ones become obsolete. Yes, yes. And Yes. I'm dying to remember whose quote that is. Someone will message me. Yeah. But yeah, creating the new system so the old ones become obsolete really feels like a big theme and what the new earth is all about. Yeah. And the new earth is us coming back into harmony because we are completely disconnected with mm. our own internal cosmic rhythm. And, you know, listen, at the end of the day, we can say it's this one person's fault or it's... It is what it is. As a collective, a society, we're just disconnected. So now it's it's just coming back, and it's coming back to our center and coming back to 
um, our own rhythm and understanding that we are connected to nature and that the stars um, are in us, the planets are in us, and we mm -hmm. are from this. Um, and even the babies coming in, they're so yes, much more connected we're to talk that. about that. Before we move on to the babies coming in, I yeah. just have one more question to kind of tie up this portion. And that is, you know, right now there's this war going on between Russia and Ukraine. And in terms of like as astrologically, are you seeing now what you were seeing? Because you said that the astrology was like similar to World War One, World yeah. War Two back when it was COVID, is it still like that? Or do you feel like this is going to blow over soon and this is going to be quite contained? What are the stars yeah, saying? I mean, I think that we are actually have already been in what we would call a war, World War III. I mean, some people are like, why are we calling it that? Why are we labeling it? It is what it is. But I think it's been a psychological war. It's yeah. a different kind of war. So I think we've already been in that. Because we're going to, oh, again, chills from my, oh my God, through my whole entire body right now. Crazy. Um, I think we're going to look back. I mean, even in 20 years, you look back at this period of time and it's like, we were at war. We are. So I yeah. think it's already going. I think this is a continuation of this. I don't believe anything that they're saying. And now let me just preface, this doesn't mean that I don't care about any innocent people dying at all. I absolutely, and it's devastating. And I don't believe anything that they're telling us. Yeah. And we knew this. We knew we we're going to poke our fingers in and we're going to get involved even more because of the Pluto return is that we're not done here, you know, the United States. So we're, I think we're instigators for everything, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I think when everyone is pointing over that way, we need to look in the mirror and point because we're just as shady. Yeah. And we're doing it. So I don't believe anything that they're telling us at all. The minute they're like, everyone do this over here, you got to look the yeah. other way. These are the people to hate. Yes. These are the good yes. guys. These are the bad yes. guys. Yes. Yeah, I agree. That's a red flag for me as mm -hmm. well, because it feels like throughout history, they've told us this is the enemy. Totally. It's drugs. It's terrorism. It's COVID. Now it's Russia. Yeah. And I believed it all too before, before like I had this massive awakening in like um, April of 2020, another awakening, you know, to seeing through this. You know, you just, you believe it. You don't know what else to believe. You're like, why would they not be telling totally. me the truth? Right. And so a lot of people just haven't gone through deeper awakenings yet. And mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing such a divide on earth of um, the people that are more, and I'm not saying people that are awake, it's like, oh, we're better. It's not like that. It's just, and listen, we don't know what's going on. There's a lot. And one thing I want to say, Spirit did make it very clear. I went to the Kashuk Records and they showed me that they are purposely not showing us all what's going on with everything with COVID and everything because we wouldn't be able to handle it. So as a collective, our lesson, and it's better for us to not know. So they're almost putting a veil over everything. And that's the thing we have to understand is we're not supposed to know everything. But mm. but it's important to have awareness is that like, here's the box. I'm going to step outside the box because I at least know that I, there's more outside the box. A lot of people are in the box and don't even know that there is a box. Right, right to look outside. Right. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> because they're in it. Yes, exactly. I so it's just have the awareness that you have to step outside the box and look know that there's more versus mm. just being in the box and not even knowing you're in the box. So true. Yeah. So true. I feel like though, as an astrologer, you do have like a bit of a peek behind the curtain. Like you yeah. can kind of see yeah, you can what see. the themes are going to be and where yeah. things are leading us to. Yeah. What I want to know is this new world order that we're hearing about, is that astrology? astrologically, is that set up to actually take place? So that's a really great question. I want to preface with, I don't know if I have every single answer, but what I will say is it's tricky because the astrology of where we're going is very futuristic. It's very, um, especially when Pluto leaves Capricorn and moves into Aquarius. I mean, it is like balls to the wall in the sense of um, it, more power to the people as well, but that's also very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very um, like totalitarian. Um, is that the word? I'm, I can't think of the word. It's it'll come to me. It's um, it can be very cold. It could be very extreme. It could be very um, like we're removing souls and just becoming robots, right? So, in a way, the astrology does show that. But here's the thing with astrology: you have a higher and lower octave, and you have like a million energies in between. So the higher octave is that power to the people, and that we're all coming together, and it's like. Because Pluto and Capricorn is top down. It's the government rules everything. And then when it moves into um, 
Aquarius, um, which it will be doing very shortly, it is a very different energy. It's literally power to the people and the people creating, community people creating. And it's like no more, you know, government was meant to protect us and now it's being, it's there to control us, right? So we are going to see a shift in that as well. But the, and this, that's a more of a higher octave. And the lower octave though is very much like we um, are becoming machines, and we're, you know, putting microchips in us and we're connected to the cloud. And and some people will be like, conspiracy? Well, that's not a conspiracy because they're already talking about this and doing it. That's definitely yeah. not a conspiracy. So it becomes very, like, Aquarius has two sides. It's, mm-hmm. like, very much, like, gather people around, you know, or it could become, like, very disconnected and cold, you know? Yeah. But those are just extremes of every, any sign, right? Any sign has extremes. So the New World Order, in a way, makes sense for that and like that's where it depends on what we as a collective do so the astrology shows us the cycles and the temperament and the pulse and the rhythm and if we don't do anything this is most likely what's going to happen right but if we are waking up and we are tapping into our consciousness and seeing past this then we have the ability to shift that and that's where you know even right now I'm just getting information it's like they're showing me like we don't know everything that's going to happen because you guys are creating it like they're Mm -hmm. literally showing me this right now like we're creating it because this is an experiment we're here so yeah we can go one extreme and we're just like we plug ourselves in every day you know or we are you know really helping out in community and Aquarian is like it doesn't matter your race religion color like we are one again I'm getting chills this is so beautiful we are one race we are humanity and that doesn't discount like not celebrating people's differences and celebrating different races and cultures yeah. I'm not saying that because I know a lot of people like to twist no, words that's um, not what you're saying we get that yeah um, but this is humanity and we are learning that like we are here on earth this place is crazy <laughs> this place this is crazy. This we signed crazy. up for this. We did. That's why, like, we have to laugh and we have to, you know, support each other. So mm. it, I don't have the answer because it's up to us. It's mm. truly up I to us as that. a collective. And I mean, listen, what I've seen so far, I, I'm not, I'm not banking on the collective that much because uh, <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's, it's a little dense out there. So it feels like it's just now more than ever is <laughs> time for people to really step out of the spiritual closet and yes. shine their light yes. and speak their truth yes. and use their voice. Yes. And if you've got a dream, if you've got yes. a desire, make it happen. Yes. You know, if you want to start serving people, if you want to start healing people, yes. the world needs you. The world now. needs your magic now. Because if you do not do this now, then like, we're going to go down that other path. So yeah. get off your ass and we help need us. all the light workers. <laughs> yes. So speaking of needing all the light workers, yes. let's talk about... This new wave of spirit yes. babies coming through, yes, which yes. I happen to have one. I know. <laughs> so tell us, because I started reading the book Spirit Babies yeah. when I first found out I was pregnant. I had so many people recommend this book to me and I started reading it. And then I started seeing you live streaming all about spirit babies. Yeah. And you were saying all of this magical, wonderful stuff about the babies that are coming in, yeah. in this current time oh, frame. so beautiful. Um, tell us. It's so... <laughs> Beautiful. So I want to preface with this just so people could understand that um, I do not have a baby. Um, I am not the kind of girl that like dreams about, imagines her baby. If anything, I'm like, where's my man? Let's go get my man. So I want to preface that um, with what I'm going to tell people is that in 2019, I had a, I have a spirit baby that has talked to me. Like no medium has come and told me this. She came to me. It shocked me. I was overwhelmed with it. I felt her as if I was holding her in my arms. Like the heart connection was so powerful. It brought me to tears. Yeah. Um, I actually felt a strong connection to Judaism. I am Jewish, but not religious. But I can tell that we've been together for lifetimes and lifetimes. And I'm like, oh, that's what my soul comes from. Because my soul, mm. soul comes from deep like mysticism, Jewish mysticism. So I wanted to preface with that and say, um, and she's on my necklace now. Like I, mm-hmm. I have her. She's with me all the time. So... Um, But right now what is happening is these spirit babies are communicating with me. So a reason why I want to tell people that is because I think sometimes people are like, oh, you're just like a woman that really wants a baby and is like imagining this. And it's like, actually, no, I'm like praying for my man to get his shit together and like come to me, you know, like that's first and foremost for me. I'm like, that's what I desire. So with that being said, um, I'm tapping into these babies and I know that I've known for a while that I will be working with children. I thought it was actually children that have maybe passed over. Um, and helping the parents, but now I'm seeing it's actually the spirit babies coming in. So 
They are coming in. They are coming in with a vengeance. They are coming in strong. A lot of them are new souls that haven't been to, not new souls as they're um, young, but maybe not on earth. Okay. They haven't been here, but that doesn't mean they're not advanced because they're yeah. incredibly advanced. Where um, where are they coming from? They're coming from all over. That I don't have the names because they're coming from all over and there's names that we don't even know about. Mm. Like, so I don't even know. They're literally just coming from all over. Um, and, um, so you know how sometimes, sorry to interrupt, yeah. how people say like, oh, this is an old soul. They've been to earth many times before. This is actually different, right? Some of them. Yeah. I mean, what I, this is the information that's coming through for me. Yeah is that they are very pure. There are new vessels, at least for Earth. They're coming here to uplift the vibration because them just, again, chills all over so many times. Always a good them, sign. Them just coming here already shift the vibration, the grid of the of the universe of Earth. So they're coming here. Um, they do need um, conscious, clean vessels. And I talked about that before. And I said there's going to be a lot of people that didn't think they were having kids are going to have kids. A lot of people that were older, it's like, I thought I was done. No, if you are connected and you are open, you're coming through. Um, and, you know, conscious mamas are the the new way forward. They are truly, um, and like you, you, like you said, you shared it too. Like you just knew this baby had to come through. Yeah. And like. It was so strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was so quick. Yep. And we both felt it. Yep. And it was like, we, we have to just kind of make way. <laughs> yes, totally. And I'm, I'm glad you listened because that's the thing is I told people, these babies are coming through and they are coming through quick and people are going to have to adjust. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, like I said, that didn't think they want kids. Um, it's going to be a different vibration because they need certain, um, certain vessels to come through. Um, and of course, there's always going to be people that are unconscious that these babies come through. And that's a major lesson for the parents as well. Um, but they need clear, open vessels that are going to be okay because we have to support them in different ways. So we all have the same DNA. It's just a matter of like, I think it's like a piano key, like what's turned on, what's turned on, what not. We're not activated. We're like, eh, it's like half the piano is like sunken in, you know, and we're like, that's what we're going through our awakening. All this light coming in, we're waking up, more keys are being pressed, but they're coming in with more keys that are pressed. And so their mm. DNA expression is different. They're not going to have karma like we have. They don't have to go through these massive awakenings, these dark night of the souls, if anything, they're going to have a hard time on earth because this is a dense vibration. So we need to support them differently because their, their vibration is so angelic, so soft that they need nature. They need, um, no preservatives. Again, getting chills on that. They, they need to, I mean, it's everything I, I went through Lyme for five years and was super sick and I have a very sensitive body. So I know firsthand, like everything that I went through, they're going to need. So you got to be like way less lighting. Um, more nature, you know, no chemicals, no processed food. Um, really, environment is everything to them. Sounds like they're going to be really healthy. <laughs> oh, it's going to be really healthy, but then we poison everyone mm. by being here. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and, you know, there's a lot of controversy about other things that we put in them. So they're not going to be able to tolerate that stuff. So it sounds like these babies that are coming through are requiring and demanding to be raised yeah. in a different world yes. and really yes. outside of a lot of our yes. old systems that we've been raised in. Yes. And they're going to teach us and tell us things. So yes, they're, they still need parents because they're um, immature and young and they don't know what to do, but they have wisdom so much. I mean, I even told you before we were talking that you were in my dream with your baby and your baby was already connecting with their, with his star family over there. And I was like, oh, that's right. They can do that now. So their vessels are wow. just so clear. Like they communicate. They're like, oh, that's my star's family from there. And like, they mm -hmm. say this and you were like, oh, cool. And you were like yeah, getting information that. from him. That. You were getting yeah. information and you were like, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what they're going to do. Beautiful. Yeah. I know. And you were wild. also saying that like, um, this new wave of baby, because it does feel like a lot, I mean, I don't know if this is just my news feed yeah. and the bubble that I'm in, because now I'm pregnant, but it feels like a lot of people having babies right Everyone, now. I told right? people this, it's I've been talking about this, even everyone people, is having, even people that are not wanting to be, not wanting yes, to get pregnant, what saying. are getting pregnant. That's what, I've been saying this, I don't know when the first time this came through, um, it might have been like six months ago when I first did my first um, live about it, I don't even know what it was. Um, but that's what I was saying. It's like, it's all happening and, um, they're coming through and they even showed me, so my, I have a little girl in spirit and, um, we're waiting on the dad for her. That's my contract. Not everyone needs that, but that's my contract. 
And um, when I commit to that relationship, then she showed me she's coming through strong, like mm. fast. It also feels like a lot of women in their 40s are also conceiving right now. So yeah. it doesn't surprise me. And yeah. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all anymore when I see like a woman that's like in her 40s that's having a baby. Because that's also, it's a program that we've been told. And I understand like in 1810, that probably was really old to have a baby back then. But we're kind of still in that system of thinking that that's old. First of all, we have technology if people need it. Um, that is a beautiful thing. Again, that could be used for negative or positive, right? Um, but people are also having natural babies in their 40s. And again, I know I was put here to be an example. And like, I'm going to have my baby. I think I probably give birth like maybe at 45 or right before 45. And it's only a program and it only seems old because society told you that it was old. But really, like... I wouldn't have been able to be, and everyone's different, but for me, I wouldn't have been able to be a, um, the mom that I'm going to be in my 30s because I wasn't ready because I had to go through massive, massive awakening all through my 30s to get me to this place, right? But everyone's different, and that's what I want to express is everyone has a different soul contract, so it's like mm. we can never compare to anyone's age, anyone's journey, anyone's story because we are all living individual soul contracts. Totally. It feels like for me, like similarly to what you shared, it feels like I've been connected to this soul for Aww. quite some time and it's been waiting yes. for me to meet the right dad. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of them can come through with anyone, but they're also, you know, it depends on how aligned we are with our souls. And um, this was clearly a contract that needed to come through. Um, but like I knew that um, I had a, my dreams tell me, my dreams are not just dreams, like they are prolific and they tell me stuff. And there was this one guy that um, we were discussing if we were going to like, you know, have fun together. And um, I said no, because the biggest thing was I knew we were going to have a baby. And they showed me it coming through like fast. And I was like, oh, okay. And I knew he wasn't my partner. So um, who I wanted to spend my life with, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes they will come through with anyone. So that's why we have to, you know, be mindful that like... Again, I'm not want. telling people what yeah. to do or trying to, you know, but like they will come through. Mm. Um, but like yours was waiting for that. I know mine because they show me um, she's holding his hand. So when he comes, then she's coming. Mm. Um, but everyone's story is different. And that's yeah. what we have to understand. And you've also shared that like a lot of the babies coming through are going to be a lot more fluid in terms of gender. Yes. Yeah. So this is a slippery slope because I know that... Um, a lot of people are very sensitive to the subject, you know, but what I am getting is that, um, yes, it is becoming a little bit more fluid. Um, I don't see them as much changing their gender as in just coming through and being who they are, you know? Um, so that's what the information that I'm getting, but it's like, redefining what is masculine, redefining what is feminine, redefining mm -hmm. what they even, if they call themselves that, you know, I mean, the reality is there's no gender in spirit, but we are on earth and there's gender here. I mean, perhaps because we made it up and perhaps that's a program, um, but you know, there's a masculine feminine in everything. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there could be something new that we don't even know about. You know, listen, mm -hmm. I try, I'm very traditional in a lot of ways, but also open um, for other people. But I'm also aware that the consciousness doesn't define itself. So, yeah. you know, I would desire a masculine man, but that's just for me. But I also respect everyone's choices, what anyone wants to do with their journey and with themselves. Of you know. So yeah. let's go back to astrology. Yeah. And in terms of, for people listening that really want to understand more about their astrology, they know all about their sun sign, they maybe had their chart done, they might have had one reading, yeah. I would love to go into love, the Venus signs yeah. for everyone, um, because I think everyone's always interested in like, yes. well, what, what about romance for me, what am I like in relationships, I know compatibility is like such a vast topic because it really depends on yes. an entire person's chart. Totally. But could you like run down like, okay, this is how you shop in love if you're like a Venus in Aries, yep. a Venus in Taurus, yes. etc. I think that Let's would be so it. good for people. Yeah, so Venus in the chart is the way we give love and receive love. It's also our gifts, our self-worth, um, and what we desire. And so it's it's really beautiful. Again, male, female, um, we see it play out. It's really beautiful. So Venus in Aries, someone that has a Venus in Aries is definitely going to be a hunter. 
they are probably attracted to, they're either aggressive themselves um, or they're attracted to someone that's a little more aggressive, right? It just depends on how they're playing it out. Um, but they want to be very physical. They want to go do things. They want to, um, you know, active, move, dance, um, you know, do sports. Like they want to get out there. And they could be very much like into the hunt. So they like go after the person. What I always say with Venus in Aries is like, you got to slow down sex a little bit because they like to just dive right in. You know, mm. they don't like to wait. So just slow it down a little bit because let's see if you even like the person, you know. Mm. Um, Venus in Taurus is a very sensual lover. Um, you know, Taurus likes the pleasures. So it's like going to make sure they're going to be loyal. They're going to be stable. Um, really just like, let's go have like beautiful chocolate and, and high quality wine. And you like make sure it's romantic. And, you know, they're just very loyal and and. They're also um, touch, like they want to touch you and be affectionate with you. Mm. Um, Venus in Gemini, which I have, that could get a little tricky at times. Um, it's definitely a little flirty, a little witty. Um, it likes to, it gets bored easily, so it needs mental stimulation. Like that's the most important thing. I always say, I'm like, listen, it could be the hottest man in the world, but if I'm not stimulated in my mind, my hoo-ha is not going to be stimulated, mm -hmm. you know? Like my pants are not coming off if my mind is not turned on. And that's big because it's an air sign, right? So it needs the mental stimulation. It's very curious about things. Kind of jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Venus in Cancer. Venus is Cancer, really wants to take care of you, wants to know like you're part of the family. Um, again, it's very like, like a crab. The crab is a little bit um, self-protective. So it could be kind of hard to like get in. But then once you're in, it's like their mush inside. And they mm -hmm. want to take care of you and cook for you and love you and hug you and... Yeah, it's like really sweet, you know. I would love it if I met a man with a Venus of Cancer. I'm like, take care of me, please. Like, <laughs> it's great. And then um, we have, um, I'm going blank on the things, uh, Leo. <laughs> we have Leo. Um, so Venus and Leo is, um, that's super fun. That's someone that loves to give gifts, um, give presents, um, loves to go big. They want to shout their love from the rooftop. Um, they're definitely into like bling. And so they, you see them, they wear a lot of bling or they're attracted to women or men that are like flashy. Um, it's just, it's like go big or go home with Leo. Like always, mm. like it's just like love, big love, big this, like big over the top. And then we have um, Virgo. Venus and Virgo is really, that's a tricky one in the sense because Virgo sees the faults in, in everything. Like, you guys are amazing editors. So they can be, it's like if their partner is not perfect, you have to look out for that, right? Um, but they want to fix and improve. So they're probably going to be invested in their partner's, like, health journey or their own health journey or just, like, making sure that everything is right. Like, they have their finances in a row and they're just, like, being taken care of. Um, so it's really beautiful. It wants to be of service, mm. truly. Venus in Leo um, is, um, you know, in a way it's at home there because, Leo, um, sorry, Libra. 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 Um, so Venus in Libra is, Libra is all about relationships. It's very relationship oriented. When you think of Libra, it's the bicycle built for two. It, like, it, you know, like um, Aries might do something on their own, but Libra is like, no, it's just better if you're here. So they are, they're a little bit people pleasery. So you have to be careful with that because they can go, that's the shadow side of it. But the other side is, they they just want they want a partner like they do better with a partner they want people around um, to bounce ideas off of because it's also an air sign so it's very mental a lot of um, communication um, it's really pretty I, I really like v Venus in um, Libra is like it's like safe you know you're like you know what you're gonna get with that mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have Venus in Scorpio which I mean super sexy so that is like if you're really tuned in and tapped in. That is like, I'm going to love you till the end of time, right? But they can go deep and super intimate and super sexual. And it wants to know the deepest, darkest secrets. And, um, you know, it's like it wants to claim the person, you know? Mm. So I see a lot of people with this. They're either like sleeping around because it's a very sexual sign or, and they won't be with the person unless they find the person, then they go all, all in. Or they're just like nothing and like a nun, until they find the person. So it has extremes mm. with that. And then um, Capricorn, or no, Sag, we, let's do Sag. Um, Venus and Sag is fun. They want adventure. They want to go on trips. It's like, 
they, you need to make them laugh and they'll make you laugh. So if you make them laugh, like that's, they want that, that and the, like a road trip and like jumping, jumping on a plane, they're just so happy. So like they have to, it's a fire sign. So they want adventure and see the world and like, let's create moments and experiences together. Mm. Capricorn is very much like, um, oftentimes with people with the Venus and Cap, they're attracted to someone older. Um, it doesn't always have to be older in age, but more like older in soul or older in just maybe like have their career um, put together because they're attracted to the boss type. Um, and they are often the boss themselves. So it's very much like, um, you know, I kind of know what I want. I'm going to go after what I want. And it's kind of oriented that way. Um, Venus in Aquarius is very much about friends first, I always say. And then it's like, let your freak flag fly. I know everyone says that about Aquarius, but it's true. It's like, hey, like there's a, there's a joke about like all these signs and then like Aquarius wakes up and it's like, oh, it's an alien. And it's like, oh, I'm hot. That's turned on. You're like, I'm turned on mm -hmm. because it's like the more different it is, the better. And like you are here to like create relationships and have relationships that are outside the norm. Mm -hmm. And that don't, don't really fit the stereotype for other people. But for, uh, having a solid friendship is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And then um, Pisces is the ultimate, like, oh, soul love. Like, uh, just, like, finding that soulmate, you know. So people with Venus and Pisces, they often, um, you know, see the red flags but ignore them anyways. So they have to kind of be aware of that because you have such a beautiful heart that you just want to, you just want to fall in love and you just want to, sometimes you want to rescue people a little too much. So I always say mm. rescue dogs and cats to rescue your boyfriends or girlfriends, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's a beautiful energy. You're here about compassion and love, like truly transcending the physical plane. I love that. Yeah. So everyone, if you have looked up your charts, yes. go and figure out what your Venus is in and come back and listen to that. Yeah. And they so can go good. to my website and pull up my chart, their chart. Mm, yeah. Beautiful. Give us the name of that website. DaniellePage.com. P-A-I-G-E. -E. We'll put that in yeah. the show notes as well. Yeah. Speaking of love and romance, yes. what are your thoughts on like soulmates and twin flames? Because I feel like people will talk about this a lot. Everyone's got different takes on it. Yeah. I would love to hear like from an astrological take. Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on it? So it's interesting. The book I'm writing and I always joke, I'm like, it's going to be done in 2075. Like, honestly, <laughs> I don't know how you get this stuff done. Like, I literally it's cannot. <laughs> I know. So it is about love. Um, from all my experiences, because I've gone through hell and back with love, like so much so. And I'm like, I didn't just come to earth to just cry. Um, I came here to at least help people with my experiences so that they don't have to go through what I went through because it's been rough for me, but that was just my journey, what I had to, how I had to learn. So I have a lot of experience with soulmates and the such and the like. Um, we have many kinds of soulmates. Soulmates doesn't always have to be romantic. Um, it, you know, I had a boss that was horrible to me and he was a soulmate because because of him, I quit that job and I launched my um, website 14 years ago and started um, the astrology business because he was so horrible to me that I had to get out of there. And I realized later on, I'm like, he pushed me. So that was a contract that we had because I would have stayed. I wouldn't have like, I wouldn't have jumped mm. ship as quickly, but it pushed me into my purpose even more. Interesting. So every soul contract that we have, regardless of if, like, if it's a positive experience or if it's like, yes, it feels like a negative, that yes. is a soulmate. Oh, totally. Totally. Mm. I mean, these... We have so many kinds of soulmates. These are contracts that we have. And really, if you just look at it as these are all actors in the play, and it's like, okay, bring on actor like 542. Bring on actor this one. Okay, she's done with this lesson. Now she gets this one because what did your soul want, mm -hmm. right? And we know we're going to have these experiences, especially in romantic love, because who else are you going to surrender your walls to, you know? Like I'm dealing with that right now with someone here in Miami and it's such a deep, deep soul connection and um, it's getting into the deepest parts of my heart and it's opening me up in ways and there's so much growth and we're not together right now, but there's so much growth because of that from both of us on both sides. And so it's been hard, but like what a beautiful gift that is. So yes, we have many soulmates, you know, twin flames. Here's the thing. People get so, and I, I was there. So just, <laughs> I was there. I get you. Like I was so convinced these people were my twin flames and people are like, uh, you know, if I say something about Twin Flames, they're like, well, just because if you're not on Twin Flame journey, here's the thing I want people to understand. I'm actually on a Twin Flame journey. And I also don't believe most of the Twin Flame stuff I, it's out there. So um, that being said, most people are in toxic relationships calling it a Twin Flame. And they confuse karma with love. 
Mm. And they confuse this closeness and this um, this feeling of familiarity with twin flame. And it's not. That's mm. not the case. And most people probably won't be with their twin flame in this lifetime. And that's this reality of it. And that's what people don't understand is it's not necessarily that you two are going to be together in this lifetime. And we have this whole fairy tale is that they come together, one runs, and then you separate, and then you come back. Um, I mean, that's really like a beautiful poetic thing, but there's so much more to it than that. Yeah. To actually be in a twin flame relationship, you need to move through all your shadows and all your triggers and all your shit. And to be honest, you don't want a twin flame relationship. You don't I want one. Just gonna you say, don't want yeah, one. No. It sounds like <laughs> it sounds like if you actually think about people saying like, oh, it's a twin flame because We, we were together and then someone ran away and then we came back and it, it sounds like a trauma bond. It a hundred like- <laughs> thousand percent. And the only reason why they're calling it a twin flame and they're justifying it is because of a lot, a lot of the spirituality online. And, and really, listen, twin flame, we just made up because these are all words that we create in this, you know, human vocabulary. I mean, yes. Do we have connections with people that transcends as physical? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are there connections of people that we are literally came from like the same egg is what I like to call it? Yes. Are are more unions forming, especially this year and because the collective is waking up? Yes. Does that mean most people that are in a trauma bonding situation are twin flame? No. That means we got to work through our shit. And just like I did in my 20s and 30s and still going... We have yeah. a lot of shit to work through. And I think those <laughs> relationships where it's like on again, off again, on again, off again, that's not like a stable ground no. for a relationship. No. And I think no. if you're justifying it by saying, well, it's because we're twin, twin flames, it's like, yeah, it's, we've got to be real with ourselves. Like, does yes. your nervous system feel safe with this person? And that's what it is. You know? That's it. Like, yeah. do they do they feed you? Do they serve you? Are like, they choosing you? Are they choosing you? Huge. Um, do you feel safe around them? Yeah, because if it's yeah. on, off, on, yeah. off, there's not that safety. That's why, I mean, people get so triggered by this, but good, let them be triggered. I'm going to let people be triggered <laughs> because the thing is just forget about this twin flame. Like, look at the person. You're making excuses yeah, for them I being agree. an asshole. I agree. Whether it's male or female. It, like, I, really. I personally, like, when I've read about twin flames, I'm like, I don't want it. It doesn't sound like a relationship I want to right? be Right, and that's the thing is it's not for everyone because it's a very, but I, I listen, I know I'm going to have a choice between two men. I've, they've showed me this. That's a very and Venus and Gemini thing too. <laughs> totally, totally. I know it's crazy. It's crazy. And one of them is more aligned with that twin flame vibration. But that there's a lot still that needs to go into that. And mm. But also, that's also because that's what my soul wanted, right? And that doesn't come around at like 20 years old. Like The reality is, and this is not anything I read, this is that knowing to be in a twin flame relationship, or we're just going to call it a twin flame, but that's just, again, the human construct name, is really dissolving this ego and the shadow and really coming into wholeness with your heart that most people literally aren't capable. And I'm not even saying I'm capable of that. I'm just, I'm not even saying that I'm there, you know, but most people will not become that evolved and, and and people that's going to piss people off but I'm sorry that's just the reality of this I'm not even saying I am evolved like that yeah because otherwise I'd be with this person but I'm not <laughs> you know so yeah it's just the reality of this good yeah well Danielle this yes. has been wonderful I would love to wrap up with our three questions that we always ask every guest sure. which is what is one thing that you're loving right now oh my god I'm loving my new life in Miami Yes. It suits you so much. Yes, I love it. Yay. So happy that you were able to manifest yes. that for yourself. Yes. Thank you. Something that turns you on. Turns me on. Um, a man showing up and being a man. Yes. Like show up, follow through, help me in life so I don't have to do everything and carry all the bags. <laughs> I'm petite love. and tiny. Can you help me carry them? So yeah, a man showing up turns me on. There we go. Nice. And a recent time you experienced magic. Oh, just recently um, had a little run-in with, uh, we'll just call him the ex, and um, I've seen him before, but um, it was actually a kundalini activation between us that shocked wow. me, I didn't know, and I, it took me out, it was super, we didn't actually do anything, but it was incredibly sexual on both our ends, also very loving, and then also a lot of grief that I had to clear out because um, it was a, another, like a deep awakening. So that was beautiful and magic and hard at the same time. But it was beautiful. Beautiful. 
as well. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Danielle. This has thank been you. so wonderful. Where can everyone come and find you and check out all of your work? Um, so my website is daniellepage.com, P-A-I-G-E, and also on Instagram at I am Danielle Page. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So my loves, I hope that you loved that episode. If you did, please do share it on Instagram. I would love to see your story tags of you listening to the episode. We love to hear which episodes you guys have loved the most. Please also make sure that you leave us a juicy review on Apple, iTunes or the podcast app because that means so much to me and it really helps this podcast spread far and wide. So thank you so much for listening. I love you. I hope your week is filled with love, sex and magic and I'll see you next time.